We're kicking off a new season here on Precision Hunting TV as usual, and we're starting out in Kansas with our good friend Perry Ross. Kansas is synonymous with uh, big bucks, and as long as I'm breathing, you can count on me being there with my 45 XML every year. McWhorter Custom Rifles presents Another perfect shot with a 45 XML. Welcome back, folks. This week, I'm headed to Kansas. My good friend, Perry Ross, Ross Trophy Outfitters. Killed some really good deer with Perry in the past. He's got some big ones spotted. 45 XML's ready. You don't want to miss this. Precision Hunting TV is brought to you by McWhorter Custom Rifles, McMillan Fiberglass Stocks, Swarovski Optique, Hornady Ammunition, and Borden Accuracy. This year we're gonna be hunting with good friend, Perry Ross, Ross Trophy Outfitters. And if you know anything about big deer in Kansas, you've heard the name Perry Ross. Uh, the Real Tree Gang has hunted with Perry for years and years. Perry's been guiding and outfitting out there for nearly 30 years. And some of the biggest deer in the land, Perry's got his thumbs on them. So not a better outfitter to hunt with in Kansas than Perry Ross. So usually when we go to Kansas, we like to get there uh, a little early and do a little scouting. Perry's already got everything scouted out, but we want to go with him and see approaches to and departures from stands because that's one of the most important things. Um, even with the 45 XMLs, we like to set stuff up, you know, 200, 250 yards from where we think we're going to shoot, but you still need to know how to get in there and get out without disturbing the deer. Kansas early season can be great or it can be a pain in the behind. All the crops are usually in the field, so the deer are usually concentrated. That's the good thing. The bad thing is a lot of standing crop is higher than the deer, so you can't see them. Uh, the trick is to get in the areas where the deer stage up before they get to their final feeding area. And sometimes that's easy, sometimes it's hard. This week, it was going to be a little harder than usual. One of the first places we went and looked at, we looked out. They harvested the corn, and uh, we were able to go in and put up a, a pop-up in this island in the middle that put us within range with our 45 XML of pretty much the entire field. We decided to go ahead and at about 200 yards, put out some food. We had a new product called rack em up It's uh, roasted soybeans, roasted corn, roasted peanuts. Uh, the most phenomenal thing that I've, I've ever used. I, I used it at home, it's just, it's just amazing. So we set that out about 200 yards and a real strong aroma brought these deer right to it the first afternoon. Well, here we go, Kansas muzzleloader, opening afternoon. We've got our blind set, got a good wind, got our normal temperature in the freaking 90s, uh, which is characteristic of being out here. Gonna be a little warm, but if Mr. Two hundo walks out, it'll be worth it, won't it, Derek? That's right. Absolutely. These 45 XMLs we make, they're a real game changer in these states that have these muzzleloader seasons. 
What it allows us to do is to back up 200 and sometimes 300 yards from where we expect to encounter the deer. And that, more than anything, helps us to get into a stand and get out of a stand without, without boogering these deer. And that's paramount when you're trying to hunt big whitetails. For this hunt, I've uh, got my 45 XML on a board in action with a Brux barrel and our Peak 2.0 stock, Trigger Tech Trigger, Hawkins mounts, and top with a Swarovski. Got it sighted in at 200 yards and we're ready for action. 395 to that dead tree where a lot of those deer come out. So that's within range. Far end of the field down there is 600, but they're gonna come to this corn, so that's gonna put them within 400 too. So I think we're in pretty good shape. Wind keeps swapping left to right. It's gonna stay south, so we're we're in good shape. So as usual, it's, it's 90 degrees, uh, it's starting to get later in the afternoon, and then the does start coming out. We see does, we start to see younger bucks, and the progression continues. We see several very good up-and-comers, but nothing of the age, class, or size that we're looking for in the great state of Kansas. This segment is brought to you by Borden Accuracy, makers of the most accurate custom hunting actions on the market. Manufactured in the USA to true bench rest tolerances. Borden Accuracy equals success. So we don't want to just sit out in the mornings. This is, this is kind of hard to hunt, so I start looking and there's a big irrigation ditch on the north end of this property and we got a, a south wind so Darren and I decided to take a little bit of a chance even early and we parked down the road, walked back to this irrigation ditch, and we walked all the way back to the, uh, back to the west so we could get back where these deer were going back in the mornings. Uh, we got three quarters of the way down the ditch, we decided to come up to the edge and just kind of see what happened. Uh, we were greeted by uh, a beautiful Kansas sunrise. We saw many deer, most of the mature deer, I guess, had already left, but we saw some decent bucks, some up-and-comers still leaving the field, and that was the end of the first morning. Looking forward to the afternoon. So we're all fired up for, for afternoon number two. Uh, unfortunately, the weather had gotten even hotter. I think when we got out of the truck, it was 96 degrees. I mean, but that's really typical of early season Kansas muzzleloader hunting. We slipped back to our blind in the center of the field, got all settled in for the day. The shadow's starting to get longer and longer, and here comes the farmer <laughs> with, uh, with his combines to go ahead and uh, pick up the corn stalks to feed the cattle. So uh, that was the end of day two. Uh, we called Perry, Perry picked us up. We went to do some long range scouting on, a, on another area where he had seen some good bugs. So day three, the wind's still right for us to use the irrigation ditch. Perry had seen a really good deer in this field uh, before, we, uh, before we got there, so we really wanted to try to put eyes on him. So we get in there early, we get all the way down the field ditch and pop up about the same spot. A lot of deer there, just not what we're looking for. So we called it a day. The morning hunts are a, a real quick hunt. Uh, we got back in the truck, started heading back to the lodge. Uh, another field that Perry had uh, access to, another piece of property there. We stopped on the road just to kind of glass it, and I see a really good deer right over the grass in the back of the field. Right, so we go ahead and go back to camp. We tell Perry what we're gonna do. I got another blind in the truck. We slip in there, wind's right, wind's still blowing out to the field, and we set up another blind on the edge that would put us in position to see this buck in the afternoon. 
That afternoon, it's even hotter than the day before. But Darren and I, we know we got to get in there early because we don't want to be walking in amongst any kind of deer because sometimes even in that kind of heat, the does will come out there to get a jump on the box. So we get in there about 3.30, um, we're just sweating like you always do in early season. But then the field started to fill up and all our efforts uh, paid off. We saw probably 25 deer that afternoon. The buck that we had seen, although he was a really good buck, I felt like he was a four-year-old, probably mid-50s, maybe a little bit better. Just not really what we were looking for on our uh, Kansas muzzle. Precision Hunting TV is also brought to you by Rack'em Up Roasted Feeds, Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue, Surge Pro by Biofat Crop Care, Armageddon Gear, Gun Foam, and Mesquite Creek Taxidermy. So morning four, we decided to go back to our irrigation ditch. Uh, we slip in. We get in there, we hadn't busted anything in two or three mornings, so this is just a pretty safe, more of an observation spot than maybe a killing spot, but a good chance uh, at killing if they do exit that field. We just really didn't didn't see a shooter. It's, it's just a quick wham bam hunt in the mornings. We get back to camp, we get a good lunch. Uh, Perry has gone around and, and pulled some cards and he's found a really good shooter down on the uh, on the river. So we decide we're gonna get this blind in in the heat. Uh, he's got a, a feeder down just off the creek bank. Uh, we set up a blind about 200 yards downwind of, uh, of where this feeder is. We slip back out so we can get on fresh clothes and get all scent free for the afternoon and we're ready to hunt. Well, this afternoon, uh, day four, we're trying another spot. We. Uh, we hadn't found a big shooter. We've seen a whole lot of deer, a whole lot of bucks, a whole lot of up and comers, and a whole lot of pretty good deer, but we're looking for a big deer. And uh, Perry got a pretty good one on uh, camera this morning. So we went over there in, uh, in a new area and set up uh, on, right on the edge of the river so they don't have to move far from the cover that they're living in to get to this feeder. So uh, we popped up a blind. A giant can walk out anytime, so we're headed out. Welcome back, folks. This is a new season of Precision Hunting TV. We're also going to bring you a new segment series from the True Precision Hunting and Shooting School here at McWhorter Custom Rifles. So one of the things we wanted to talk about this year is hunt preparation. Keith, we've had a few months of off season. Rifles have been kind of put away. What do you do to prepare for your first hunt of the year? So I'm gonna pull out all of my equipment and do a systems check. I'm gonna start out with my rifle, making sure that I have a good zero and everything's functioning properly. I don't have any errors, you know, like any, any operational functions. I'm gonna take my scope, make sure that my zero is good. I'm gonna make sure that it's adjusting and tracking the way that it should. Play with my bipod and my tripod, make sure they're functioning. And you really want to train like you hunt. You know, like we want to go out and shoot in some positions and break off the rust from being stagnant and not shooting this entire off season. 
and we really want to practice, practice, practice. A lot of this equipment, you know, like these things do a, a wide variety of things for you. you know, like the scopes are, you know, like for long range, the ballistic range finders that are set up. You need to know the ins and outs of your equipment to be quick and effective with it in the field. Absolutely. Some of these ballistic solvers, like the Sig Kilo 10K, has a lot of features, and you kind of have to stay tuned up. If you hadn't used that thing in a few months, you need to refresh your way to get into the quick menu, how to make adjustments on the fly. So like we have this saying, you know, speed kills. Well, we're not just talking about the bullet, but also how quickly we can, you know, put that weapon system into action right. and get a shot off that is going to be ethical. So I always encourage people to take some formal training. People spend thousands of dollars on all this equipment, but yet they don't ever take the time to invest in themselves to improve what their knowledge base is and how well they can use the equipment. Absolutely, that's extremely important. And that's one of the good benefits of the True Precision Hunting and Shooting School here that we offer at McWhorter Custom Rifles. It lasts throughout the off season, all the way up into September. And we are gonna dive into it. We're gonna take and train with all these different equipment. We're gonna put them into action and you're gonna find out what your limitations are, what you're capable of with it, and little techniques to you know, practice at home to be more efficient at getting all this stuff you know, into operational order whenever you're hunting. Absolutely. So if you're interested in attending the Tree Precision Hunting and Shooting School, contact us at McWhorter Custom Rifles. Keith, looking forward to an interesting season this year. We've got a lot of new topics to talk about. I think it's gonna be very well. Thank you guys for joining us. That's Bobby and Keith on your first True Precision Hunting and Shooting Tip. Precision Hunting TV is also brought to you by McWhorter True Precision Long Range Hunting and Shooting School, Tacticam, Leo Photo USA, Sig Sauer, Trigger Tech, Brux Barrels, and Hawkins Precision. This segment is brought to you by Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue, Real Texas Barbecue. All right, so true to form, Darren and I slip in there in the 95 degree weather. It's miserable in the, in the mid to upper 90s. And then the front starts rolling in. The, the wind's blowing so hard that we're thinking that the blind might come off the ground, but it's, uh, it's gonna cool off after this, this little bit of rain came through and this front pushed through. And by five o'clock that afternoon, the temperature had dropped literally 20 degrees from what it was when we got in the blind. So things are starting to look good. Uh, we're just waiting for you know, what we think. We'll see some does, we'll see maybe a couple of bucks, and then hopefully this shooter that, that Perry had, uh, had seen when he pulled the camera card shows up. So I see a, a deer's back, and we didn't realize when we put the blind up that the feeder is, is below the hill a little bit, and though we could see the legs, we underestimated how tall they were. So I'm, see, I'm just seeing a deer's back, and I'm telling Darren there's a deer under the feeder, probably a doe. Um, then I look and see how big the back is. He lifts his head, and it's our buck. <laughs> that is, that's our buck. Golly, that's gonna be tough right there. Oh boy, that 45 XML has been waiting for that for four very, 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 very hot days. Ooh, he's a good one. He's a good one. think about that one. You know, Kansas has always been a, a great state for us. We've killed a whole bunch of really big deer, and this is another really big deer. Pierre Ross, Ross Trophy Outfitters, he did a, a really good job. Darren and I kind of did some things for a couple of days. We saw 40, 50 deer a day, and never could see a shooter pass up a couple good deer. But uh, this deer's old enough, and he's big enough, and uh, this is what you come to Kansas for. Perry had a picture of this deer this morning at uh, 7.15 daylight on this feeder right here. And um, so we set up, came in here, put the blind up midday, and uh, 200 yards from him, uh, we killed him. What a pretty buck. Big mass, I mean, look at that mass on that deer. Just a great buck. 
The gun I used on this hunt was our uh, 45 XML. Borden action, Brooks 26 inch straight fluted barrel, Hawkins muzzle brake, Hawkins bottom metal, Trigger Tech trigger, our peak stock painted bronze lichen 2.0, Hawkins 25 MOA hybrid mounts, Trigger Tech trigger set at a pound. The scope was a Swarovski Z8i 2.3 to 18 by 56 with a 4W reticle and a flatline ops flip out articulating level. We did load development on this one with 325 grain Pittman bullets going 3,100 feet a second. So we pack up after dark, get in the truck, and it's back to camp for Rudy's night. Southwest Kansas, Perry Ross, big bucks, all in the same sentence. Once again, Perry put us on a great buck. I can't wait till next year.